Now you don't have long left to go. So I'm not going to make this video long. I'm not going to give you like 10 things you have to do. And by the end of this video, if you get to the end, you end up forgetting them. What is my message to you guys? Well, in my experience as a teacher of 16 years, having seen the new curriculum changes coming to the maths exams, this is what I'm going to say to you. You probably have a very good knowledge of the core skills. I, you know, you know, you can apply Pythagoras' theorem when you see it, you can do simultaneous equations when you see it, etc, etc. But what you have to get used to is these exam questions which are designed to test you on your application of those skills. And whether you can use mathematical reasoning to explain the steps in your working out. Justify it to yourself at least. In other words, what I'm saying to you is a question, a GCSE question in a maths paper won't exactly scream out at you that you need to use this particular topic. This is something that you have to deduce, you have to find by reading through the question. And when you read a question, this is something that you must not do. Often students, as soon as they read the question, they start writing things down, they start putting down answers. Don't do that. Read a question once and then on the second reading, start highlighting key bits of information that may be useful to you. Sometimes you find that, you know, you highlighted something and you didn't use it and that's okay. But make sure you do a second reading where you highlight things. And after that, only begin to put down your answers. And whilst you're going through the question and even doing your answers, you may find that you use more than one topic. In fact, one of the new things that the worded questions do is they require a student to be able to use several topics on one question. So you might start off with, for example, a circle theorem question, but you might end up needing to, you know, make algebraic equations and be able to solve them simultaneously or something like that. It's really important that you understand the method of scaffolding. And what I mean by this is building from the ground up, just like scaffolding on a building. You know, you start at the bottom of a question, figure out what kind of topics that you might need, what you might use, and even write them down. So if a topic comes into your head, for example, Pythagoras theorem, write it down. Trigonometry, write it down. If you use it, you use it. It's like your toolbox, okay? When you turn up for a job, uh, you know, if you're a plumber, you turn up for your job, you bring your whole tool case with you. You know, you don't leave things behind. Whatever the job is, you'll go into your toolbox, have a look through, and then you'll find, you know, you need this spanner or this screwdriver or this drill or whatever. Make sure you have your toolbox with you and ready to apply to any question. And your toolbox is all the various topics of mathematics. Essentially, your knowledge of the core skills. And finally, guys, remember this. Maths revision isn't just reading. It's not like other subjects like science or English where you can just have flashcards and keep reading them. Maths requires doing. You need to practice. And on that note, make sure you practice lots and lots of past exam questions. Even if you've done a paper already in class with your teacher or whatever, go back to it after a few weeks. Make sure you practice it again. The more you practice, the more familiar you will become with scaffolding, how to build up questions, and then hopefully you'll be successful in your exams. I will be uploading more past exam paper walkthroughs and also uploading some predicted papers before your exam. So make sure you are subscribed and please don't forget to give this video a like. All the best guys, hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video.